last week as part of this event. Or you could just as easily talk about Bob and Christianity or politics or the folk tradition or lyrical analysis. So I'm going to focus on the fan perspective because it's what I know and I think it's the fun perspective. Whether it's because we can relate to his music or because it inspires us or because it makes us want to dance or because it's funny and just makes us smile. His music brings us together and it brings us joy. Uh, that's the reason that it's the focus of my podcast because I find it so much more enjoyable to talk about what I like about his music and the experience of being a fan rather than just picking apart his music in a critical or serious way. So I'm going to talk about Bob Dylan from the perspective of a fan who came along well after the 1960s and talk about some of the ways his music has inspired me over the years as well as my observations on his fans based on my many friendships and interactions I've had over the course of the last 20 some years. Uh, I've, had, uh, I've had so many of those conversations with those fellow Bobcats have had powerful experiences with his music. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about Bob Dylan's authenticity and why that trait makes him and his music resonate so deeply with fans. And I also, uh, one other thing I do is I go to local high schools and present about Bob Dylan to history of rock and roll classes. So I'll talk about Bob through a historical lens, how he changed music, and why he's interesting and important, and how I explain that all to 16-year-olds who have never heard of him before. And I'll also uh, talk about and read a little bit from this book that just came out that Ed mentioned uh, that I helped put together called Bob Dylan in Minnesota, Troubadour Tales from Duluth, Hibbing, and Dinkytown. The book serves as a guide to Minnesota for Bob Dylan fans. My portion of the book covers the relationship between Bob and his home state, how being from Minnesota shaped his imagination as a youth, how Minnesota has served as a much needed escape for him at critical times in his life, and how Minnesota has inspired him as an artist. There are many hundreds of Dylan books, and this one has stories you won't find in any other, told by fellow Minnesotans, so I'm very proud to have been a part of it, even though my wife would point out that I'm really from Iowa, so I'm kind of a poser. <laughs> uh, but the reviews of this book and, and the, this book series have said that it's refresh, refle, refreshingly non-academic and interesting and fun, and that's right in line with my approach to talking about Bob Dylan, is not taking it too seriously and just kind of talking about what I like about it. When I present on Bob, I like to start by finding out what he has said about a given topic, topic as to avoid unnecessary speculation. As we know, Bob has been speculated about and misinterpreted so much in his life, so I don't want to add to that if I don't have to. So in 1977, here's what he had to say about the purpose of his music. He was asked, what's real to you, art? Bob answered, art is the perpetual motion of illusion. So of course he immediately says something that I would spend all day trying to figure out what he means by that. But he went on to say the purpose of art is to inspire. That inspiring people is the highest thing you can aspire to. And I think it's informative to know that he does aspire to that. He doesn't create his art for himself because he enjoys it or because he feels like he just has to get it out. He creates for his audience and he wants his music to connect with us. In 1978, a year later, Bob again addressed the topic of inspiration with John Green from the Minneapolis Star Tribune, and he took it a step further, saying it's how he would like to be remembered. Bob said if he even wants to be remembered at all, he wants to be remembered by the people who have been inspired. And that's why we're here today, and why Bob Dylan uh, Duluth Dylan Fest exists and why Bob Dylan is worth discussing and writing about because of his uncanny ability to create music that does resonate and does inspire millions of people all over the world. Bob acknowledged this then in 1986 when he was asked why his music has meant so much to so many people. And he casually said, I guess it's been inspiring. I know it's been inspiring to me to write it. Bob's music has been inspiring me and has been a part of my life for a long time. So I'm going to start by sharing that story. Past audience to seem to enjoy it, and if you're a Bob Dylan fan, I think you'll be able to relate to a few parts of it as well. I've been a Bob Dylan fan since I was a little kid. When I first put on my older brother's CD copy of Greatest Hits Volume 1 when I was seven or eight years old, my brother had hundreds of CDs, and the only reason I chose that one, and I remember this specifically, was because he told me there's a guy who sings like this. And I'm not going to do that again. I hate it when people do that. But I had to do it this once for the story. 
So my brother had seen Bob on We Are the World and seen Dana Carvey impersonate him on Saturday Night Live. And I remember thinking when he told me that, why would someone sing like that? Does he sing like that on purpose? And if he does, why is he a famous singer? People must like the way he sings. And he played the CD for me, and it turned out that I liked it too. And he didn't really sing like that most of the time, to borrow a phrase. <laughs> I began listening to the album nightly while going to sleep, and it truly cast a spell on me. Uh, it's a cliche, but there's really no other way to say it. It made me pay attention to music the way I'd never paid attention to music before. And no song more so than Mr. Tamarine Man, and that remains my favorite song to this day. I was too young to appreciate the poetry or the social messages of any of those greatest hits songs. I just loved the sound of his voice and the music. Although I do remember sitting in bed late at night, staring at the ceiling, and just listening to him sing, take me disappearing through the smoke rings of my mind, down the foggy ruins of time, and thinking, where is this coming from? Another person made this up? And it seemed like the words were coming from a different planet than everything else I'd ever heard anyone say or sing before. Um, I've listened to plenty of other music over the years, and none of it has resonated with me the way that Bob Dylan's did and continues to all these years later.